G'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. I'm Mike. And I'm Dale. And Dale, we've got a bit of a special episode this week. We do. Because you managed to have an interview with the director of Blink TV and, of course, the head of delegation for Australia, Paul Clark. Yes, totally. We've, we've been having this conversation the last couple of weeks to get this sorted out. It was maybe you going to do the interview, but... Unfortunately, you had to work. I did. I mean, I was working too, but I just snuck away into a meeting room for this. But yeah, no, we had a really good chat with Paul. Excellent. Now, before we get into that, we should just mention that uh, as it's Australia is our focus, we mm-hmm. have our uh, beverage of the week is a delightful little uh, Riesling from the Barossa Valley. In South Australia, yes. isn't it? Yes. Nice. Well, cheers to that, Michael. Cheers. And let's have a listen to what you uh, and Paul had to talk about. Now, we're going to give you a bit of a warning. It was over the phone, so the audio quality won't be up to our usual amazing standards of audio, <laughs> which is not the best anyway. But uh, just to let you know before you get into there, but you'll be able to hear everything Paul has to say. Yeah, let's have a listen. So, Paul, first of all, welcome to Aussie Vision. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Dale. Uh, n- not a problem. Okay, so first of all, congratulations on getting Australia back into Eurovision again, coming up to our fifth year. Uh, is that process getting any easier year by year? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I think to begin with, when the Swedes invited us back after Guy Sebastian, mm. well, even going back to that, like we couldn't believe it when we were in, invited into competition with Guy mm. Sebastian as a, you know, a, a special wild card. We were like, oh my God, this is so exciting. And then the Swedes said to us, we're going to invite you again, you know, and we were like, oh no way. Mm. Um, this uh, this year, as you know, we didn't have as great um, a result as we've had in the past, but um, they made it really clear uh, last month in Berlin um, that they wanted us to come back. So we're really delighted. And it is getting a little easier. I think, um, I think the Australians are well-liked because um, we kind of come... I think we're viewed to have really good artists. Um, yeah. Really good voices, and the songs are clever, and there's a sophistication behind what we do, and they love this competitive spirit. You know, I think in a way we're similar to Sweden like that. We sort of want to be the Swedes of the South, though. Yeah, yeah, no, so to catch that on, and I, I think, you know, in terms of the popularity of Australia, I think when we're on the ground at Lisbon, we could really feel that, actually, and, you know, even though maybe the result wasn't as strong, we've made the final year after year, and we bring quality pop, so... Yeah, that's, that's great. And look, I mean, with that, I think a lot of people ask, are asking, you know, is it going to be a permanent position or is it still going to be that invite year on year? Look, uh, that's out of my hands. I, you know, it really is out of our hands. We really hope that it will become permanent one day. Um, I, I think it's a strange one for the EDU to justify. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know, I totally can't. get that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they've also they've gone with Israel and in previous years, they've gone with Morocco, you know, like that's an unusual one too. Exactly. So, um, uh, hopefully, you know, what we've always said, look, SBS is a network that's been broadcasting Eurovision for nearly 40 years and there are plenty of, um, you know, there's a real uh, sense of um, all the ethnic um, groups and diverse groups from Europe in Australia the diasporas of Europe that have gathered mm. here, so we, you know, effectively we're just next door. We're just a long way away. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Onto Australia decides, which I think you know the, the fandom in both Australia and Europe are incredibly excited about. I think this is, this is amazing. Um, you, you've kind of been speaking about a potential of a national final now for a couple of years. Um, what point did you actually did this actually start to become a reality? Well, uh, SBS and Link began um, developing the idea after Kiev and we got a format together and then uh, we thought, okay, can we do it, can we do it uh, in 18? And we were, we, we um, thought, let's just make sure that when we put it on, it's at a scale that will be really exciting and we've got a, a state partner behind us that'll really work. And so after Eurovision and when uh, the Commonwealth Games had just finished, we went up to see the Queensland teams and we looked around for a venue 
and the Gold Coast Convention Centre is 4,000 people and it looks, it reminded me of like one of the, there's an Ultravox John Fox album called Metal Box and it just okay. felt like a metal box and mm. it just, I, I thought instantly that you could make the most exciting lighting shapes and it was just perfect for a Eurovision um, frame if you like, and the fact that you're just across the road from Broad Beach means that it's no distance to go for a party at all. Yeah, and totally. just the idea that Australians have never had the opportunity to have a Eurovision party that they're invited to in prime time, it's generally, if it's live, it's 5am. Oh, and, yeah, um, we know it, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it feels like a really exciting opportunity, but not only... Not only that, I mean, each year um, I would approach the record companies and say, right, well, who, who have you got that might be available for Eurovision next year? And there'd be a, we, we'd put a short list together, SBS yeah. and us, and we'd, we'd look for who, who the most likely and um, who the artist was that really wanted it the most and who seemed to fit the moment best. And mm. so we went with Jess last year almost to round off that sense of she was the first one that flew the flag for us at the Interval Act, and she's the last that just goes straight through into the contest. That felt like a, a good door closing. Okay, and this, okay. one, this one that we're opening now feels like we're opening a door that's um, opening innovation and collaboration. You know, we, we're really encouraging different people to contribute, and we're hoping that we can put together... Co- artist collaborations and songwriter collaborations that are highly unexpected um, yeah. because it's that sense of audacity and excitement that you get with the best Eurovision songs like you didn't they're unexpected like yeah, Thunder totally. and Lightning it's very exciting I <laughs> you saw that coming you know yeah um, true true or Animata you know it just felt oh, like yeah. well, look, you just go wow or Dami that mm, that mm. that is um really uh, what we were trying to do. So um, I'm so excited by um, the number of... We've, we've got nearly 400 songs. Oh, wow. Um, okay, right. 400. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's still, you know, there's still a few days to go. Yeah. Um, and there's some very exciting songwriters that have contributed, some famous and yep. some are completely unknown and a couple that have really... Really blown our minds. We're really excited about them. Oh, that sounds that sounds absolutely terrific. I was going to ask how it's going, but generally, have you seen from the, the music industry? You know, what's the reaction generally been about this? Well, look, it's it's strange because it's been a hundred percent positive, but uh, you can feel that a lot of the record executives are just trying to get on top of how it works, and they're having to learn quickly about mm-hmm. what Eurovision is and what the it's a very strange format where you're <laughs> bringing a bespoke song that represents a country and a bespoke staging to a show that you're in control of yourself, but it's fitting in a bigger, broader broader show. And to do that, it requires a lot more rehearsal. And so the rehearsal times, even for um, uh, Australia Decides on the Gold Coast, are going to be quite intense. Mm. So... But we're going, we're going to invite audiences in to see those. So they'll be seeing uh, the Friday night show, which will be the jury show. There'll be a matinee on the Saturday. And then the live final um, for television as well on yeah, uh, Saturday I night. Yeah, we've noticed actually the, the way that sort of stage was obviously a very similar format from those like the last kind of day or two of Eurovision itself. So with, actually with that jury and that Friday night, um, what are we sort of expecting from the jury? I mean, how is it going to be made up? Is it sort of musician songwriters? Will it be just Australian or international? And will they mark on that Friday night in a similar way that um, Eurovision does? Yeah, the idea is that I, I suppose the closest um, replica would be Melody Festival. Island. Right, okay. Yeah. But uh, at Melody Festival, Island, you have a series of judges who make decisions and then... Um, they make up 50% of the vote. It yeah. will be the same with what we've done, but we're not yet in a position to announce who the judges are. 
Um, I don't think it'll have the same international component um, of Melody Festival. Which, yeah. yeah, well, at Melo, they, they kind of... It's the first outing for the song internationally. Yeah, totally. um, uh, I think our judging panel will be smaller, but that's all yet to be completely determined. Sure. And with that as well, um, with the songs, because obviously, you know, at Melfest, the first time we see the songs is on the night, but um, and some other national finals do it. But obviously most have them out a little bit beforehand and have a bit of promotion. Is that what we should expect? Is it going to be sort of on the night to see, or is it going to be a bit of lead-up promotion of the songs? I think the record companies particularly will want to release before, and yep. I, that makes perfect sense to us because mm. you really want a momentum um, behind the TV series and what we see online yep. um, so that voting, people are primed and ready to vote. I think it's good for everybody if the song comes out earlier. So uh, I'm imagining that they'll be, um, be releasing December, January. Oh, nice, nice. And for the for the final itself, I mean, you, um, I think a few numbers kind of go around ten, twelve, six. I mean, do you have an idea of how many will be in, or is this? I do, but I can't. Yep. I can't quite say yet. Okay. We're not no worries. Far, we're not too far away. Um, come back to me in a fortnight. Yep. All right. No, it sounds good. And with this as well, I mean, have you coming into the uh, producing this contest? Have you been sort of? Um, getting sort of any advice or tips or tech advice from any of the other delegations like Sweden, for example, who obviously we obviously seem to have a really close relationship with? Yeah, we have got um, a close relationship with Germany, a close relationship okay. with Sweden. Um, I think you have to develop the format so that it suits your own country in the best way that you can and then look to get some... Um, added advice around where it suits. So we're thinking about um, working with a couple of uh, folk from Eurovision, but I don't want to name them yet, but I think okay. there'll be a couple of familiar faces that appear, and I think there'll also be a couple of familiar faces that appear from Europe that are well-known in, um, in the media um, uh, world of Eurovision. Nice, so, nice. yeah, the... And, I mean, obviously, we want this, uh, if, if I'm uh, honest, um, we want um, a songwriting and performing show that's completely different than anything that's ever been on Australian television. There isn't a show about original music being showcased to the world like this ever before. Um, some of the artists are a little bit concerned about it uh, being a competition, but um, from our perspective, it's about representing Australia in the best way that we can, and we're trying not to... It won't feel like The Voice or The X Factor. It'll yeah. feel like a show where everyone's together and they're, they're all committed to that purpose. And I think one of the incredible things you notice at Eurovision is just how... Um, sympathetic and proactive and understanding everyone is to each other backstage, mm. you know. You might be um, lined up beside Finland or Israel or um, <laughs> Montenegro. We're all artists and we're all <laughs> kind of creative teams and there's so much goodwill and that's really what we want to create here. It's not about whether you're on Universal or Sony. You want exciting artists singing dramatic and daring songs in a totally audacious kind of staging way. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, that's, that's, that's what it is to us. That sounds, that sounds amazing. The vision for it does sound fantastic. It, it does sound like um, it just does seem to be what you're hoping maybe to be an annual event now, so not necessarily one. Yeah, off. that's what we're hoping. I think everybody will look at it after the first year and just go, well, how did that feel? And mm. should we do it again? I know, I know uh, the Queensland government is very keen to do it again, and um, I think everyone will just look at it and just decide whether it becomes an annual thing. But, I mean, from that perspective, we've gradually built the Eurovision brand from being something um, that was, you know, Des Mangan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. With Terry Wogan, um, mm. you know, commentating. Yep. From there, I think Julia uh, Zamiro and Sam Pang were like, 
you know, they were so instrumental in Eurovision really noticing us and mm. getting the sense of a reverence that we had for it and the enjoyment and the spirit of enjoyment that we got and kind of just gently kind of, you know, um, uh, having a land. They, they loved that. And yeah. um, I think it's built from there to be something that we all really care about and that is in the Australian entertainment calendar. So hopefully, you know, first week in February becomes the same. Sounds good, sounds good. And obviously it's sounding like an amazing show it is and, and, you know, speaking from personal experience of getting up at all times to watch national finals <laughs> overseas, um, will people from overseas who are international and our Australians living abroad, will they be able to actually watch this um, live whatever time they may be in the world or do you not know, have those sort of details yet? Yeah, look, it's something we're exploring. We'd really mm-hmm. like them to be able to do it and we'd really like uh, people with an Australian phone to be able to vote from overseas. Oh, no. So uh, they're things that we're just trying to explore in a way that um, the show, uh, the show's voting system works. So, um, yeah, look, it's a really exciting um, project. Everyone at SBS and at Blink TV are really into it. Um, it was funny, um, the SBS managing director uh, did... Um, the Senate Select Committee um, recently, and oh, wow. um, a lot of the senators at that were fascinated by Eurovision. You know, <laughs> they were talking. Christina Connelly was talking about getting her own band together oh, and amazing. doing something. I want that. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. I, I wanted to say, please get your song in by Sunday. We really want to hear that. <laughs> oh, good. Sounds good. And just one little quick thing on another little logistics. I mean, there must be so many little logistics to work out. Your, you know, point systems, your voting. One little thing that has caused controversy in the past in Europe, uh, European national finals, if it's 50-50 and there's a draw, will it be the public or the jury who um, has the ultimate say? That's perfect timing that you should ask me that. I'm going to take it back into our next meeting and say what happens if. That's, has, tell me the example where that has impacted on the voting. Well, um, look at yeah, Spain 2017. Um, yep. Morella, Morella, who came runner-up, she had yep. a public vote. It was a jury of three, and it was uh, equal points, and then it went to the uh, jury of three to decide, so those three people decided. And there was a considerable uproar. Yeah, that hurt. That was, that was yes, a lot of upset fans, not just in Spain, across Europe and uh, internationally, myself included. Um, so, it's, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think public's always a, a nice idea sometimes. But maybe it depends on the song. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I promise you that we'll consider that and come up with um, a good answer. It would look a little weird if it was 51-49, but in the case of a draw, we clearly have to have um, a clear ruling beforehand. That's what I, I really love about Eurovision, that it's such a fair process and yeah. it's really clear the way it's laid out and we have to have that clarity. Yeah, no, it's one of those ones that those, you know, us crazy fandom of, of Eurovision do. They'd love to get into the nitty gritty of things. So, yeah, yeah no, it's, out. it's always a, a good backup plan. Um, cool. Well, I think um, this is probably the last question to sort of uh, finish off with. Um, how are you feeling about the actual the contest next year, about the plans and how Tel Aviv is coming along? Are you feeling good about uh, um, being over there? Um, look, I think that um, the Israelis will put on an incredible show. Uh, I know uh, that Yon Olasan uh, was there last week with uh, Frank Dieter Freeling, the um, head of the reference group, and all the reference group had their meeting there, and they loved it. I think it looked like a Bondi with really good hummus. Um, <laughs> wow, nice. That sounds good. I, I think we'll be really comfortable there. Um, yep. And um, the the key thing... Um, for us, I think, is to understand exactly how the staging will roll out yeah. uh, and how to apply ourselves to that because that was an issue with Lisbon mm. with no LED. Yeah. And um, um, that, that created real problems um, yeah, for a point. number of different delegations. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to understand all that soon, but we've got um, uh, a lot of... Um, artists and staging to work out in the meantime, but mm-hmm. it feels like a kind of a destiny that we're able to 
bring Australian artists across the board to this, to songwriters across the board, and hopefully we can touch a lot of hearts with what um, the artists come up with. Yeah, sounds great. Look, we're, we're a big fan of the, the national final, pool, and uh, I think it's a great direction, and you know, for good luck for it. We will certainly be doing our best to get tickets there and go along, so... Um, Excellent. We'll see up there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you definitely will. And we'll have more. I, I think this time next month, we'll have a lot more that we can tell you. So, yeah, don't be a stranger. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, awesome. Oh, well, thanks, thanks, Paul, for joining Aussie Vision. We really appreciate your time. All right, no worries. Thank you both, even though it's only the one of you today. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, uh, we have annoying nine to five jobs. If we could do this full time, it would be both of us. Cool. <laughs> No, oh, thank you. Oh, right. well, well done, Dale. I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, it was great to chat to him. Um, Paul's a good bloke. Uh, Learns a lot, actually. Yeah, one thing that really strikes me with Paul is he, just his enthusiasm, mm. his passion for it. Really is amazing. Great to hear. Oh, really, yeah. Really I was actually quite surprised about how passionate he really was about it. And, yeah, as fandoms ourselves, it's nice to see that our head of delegation is just as passionate about Eurovision as as we all crazy people are. Definitely. So let's have a quick chat about some takeaways we got from that. Mm. Probably the first point I'll raise, Dale, is our place at Eurovision, which we, you started the interview with. Mm. Looks, We're looking pretty solid. Yeah, totally. I mean, nothing's down there as a permanent thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it sounds like it's certainly getting easier every year. Um, where that's going to go into the future, I think there's... Um, Obviously, there's potential connection for Asia, but mm-hmm. we'll see whatever happens with that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing there is that, you know, I feel really comfortable that year after year we should be invited. It would be unusual now for us not to be in it. Yeah, we certainly said when the meeting in Berlin, it was just, well, you guys are here. You know, yeah. Off we go, you know. Totally. Terrific. That's good to hear. Obviously, we'd love to become permanent one day, but, mm. you know, that's obviously out of his hands. Did you find it quite interesting that he said it is a bit weird? <laughs> like is, he did yeah. acknowledge it is a little odd. It is. Yeah. It is. But yeah. it's great. Yeah, we can't pretend you know, it's a bit it's of an great. elephant in the room. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I also thought like the interesting thing, the other one that came out of it was, well, Australia Decides, which is what we mainly talked about, mm-hmm. is this move away from the very safe Sony internal selection and now going to the national final, which looks to be what they want to be the new normal. Yeah, which is great to hear. I mean, obviously, it's a first time coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they'll uh, have a big review of it and see how it went. Um, and we can't forget, it is just our first time. So mm. um, I think the whole thing will evolve after this first year. We'll see what kind of works, see what doesn't. But it's great to hear that it'll be coming back every year. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it made me excited about the actual comp- the, the national final. Mm. Even if it's not whiz bang and all over the top I feel like there's a vision there to make it happen so either maybe it's going to be a bit like UK and take a bit of time to build or we're going to go out with we're going to start with a bang and it sounded like they really wanted to start it properly they didn't want to just come into it like they were saying for this year coming there was even talk about it he was saying for yeah. 2018 mm-hmm. too soon let's do it properly so they seem to yeah they seem to really wanted to, to take it seriously definitely wanted to find the right venue find the right type of thing not just a TV studio or whatever a mm. real auditorium and, and something that they can add their production values to and make it spectacular could you tell I had no idea what song he was talking about with the staging really <laughs> the box thing oh that's right I had to look it up afterwards I'm yeah. like yeah totally Google them yeah <laughs> <laughs> and also looking to keep that date, that first week of February, yep. to be a national final week here in Australia. Yeah, great to hear. When he said that, it's it's an annual event they want to do. And he also, mm. you know, hinting that we could see some popular names, mm. uh, you know, uh, down here in Australia for it. So, well, wonder who? I wonder who. Oh, you, let's have a guess. I reckon Conchita. Conchita. <laughs> and we do know that Mans, who does turn up to the opening of an envelope yes. in Europe, he smells and he's there. Yeah. But he also loves the tennis. I've seen yep. him perform at the tennis before at the Australian Open, which is in January and the national finals in early Feb. So, so. I wouldn't be surprised if he rocks yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, obviously, mm. we're, that's just us speculating, but hey. Oh, yeah, total it'd speculation. It'd be great to see some uh, some some famous names. It'll probably be Lizzie, Lydia Isaac. <laughs> I love Lydia Isaac. I mean, we love her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, about, what else did we take from it? I, I thought it was interesting when you asked about the music industry response. Mm. Um, he did mention 400 songs have already been uh, submitted. Totally. I mean, the quality, who knows, but it yeah. does sound like there's some very interesting ones in there. 
and certainly looks like that. It's going to be some good artists. Like yep. what level they're going to be as an artist, I'm I'm feeling like it will be those kind of those X Factor, the voice performers in the past. That's just my guess from it. Mm -hmm. But he sounded really quite positive about it. Definitely. And looking for some interesting uh, variants and collaborations. Mm. So, you know, I'm not saying we're getting yodeling and rapping (laughs) or anything like that, but who knows? You know, Mm. who knows? It sounds like we're definitely trying to find something with a little bit of wow factor and a little bit you know, off-centre type. You can't manufacture that kind of X Factor. And I think that came across as well. They realise you know what, we can't do the safe thing, let's go out there and be a little bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. I also found it interesting that he thought some of the record labels were struggling to get their head around what a national final entails. Mm. Because obviously the fans in Europe and, and, and here in Australia... We know what a national final is and, mm. and what 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 it takes to put it together. Um, so interesting that because it's not it's very foreign to Australians. It's it's t- totally new. Like yep. this is new for everybody, even the artists themselves. Mm-hmm. He was mentioning they're a bit worried about the whole competitiveness of yep. it all. Yep. This is unusual for us, and I think we're all trying to get our heads around what this is actually going to be. <laughs> That's great. Very exciting. Good. I'm really looking forward to hearing some of those songs. Uh, what else uh, what did we get take from that one Dale songs mm. when are they coming out I mean we we know how much that we love the Swedes and now definitely the Germans as well mm. <laughs> makes me do feel like we could end up at Mercedes Benz Arena in Berlin one day um, but that the fact that they're going to come out not like a Melfest on the night that they are sounding very much not 100% confirmed but about as close as you can get that there will be some promotion beforehand. Yeah. So he was saying December, January. I, I imagine would be January after probably the Christmas break, mm-hmm. if I was going to have a guess at that. Yeah. And it leaves a good month to promote the songs, make the record labels happy, which yeah. says that there are some established artists who are going to be performing. Get, and get some momentum behind the songs before they actually get performed as well. I personally mm-hmm. love to hear the songs before I see them being performed live. Same. Love it. Um, you know, so I'd love to hear them uh, released, you know, the earlier the better and get people behind them. Totally, totally. And look, probably the last thing to bring up was the kind of like surprising element that uh, we brought up. If it's 50-50 split of public and jury vote, at the moment, uh, we don't know who's going to decide. <laughs> and, you know, whatever happens, uh, it's being taken apparently into the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, if it is chosen, hopefully they do go with the public. Yeah, would, I think that would be good to see. We don't want a, a, uh, a you know, repeat of the 2017 Spanish fiasco. No, we do not no. want Richard Wilkins from the uh, Today <laughs> Show deciding who goes, who goes through to Eurovision. Eurovision in this case of a draw. Yeah, and also interesting with the juries, obviously um, not looking like any international element. It will be national Australian juries, mm. um, and we don't know the names, but um, I'm sure we'll go that was in. interesting. I was, I thought maybe potentially there might be international juries, but I think he did make it quite clear mm-hmm. that. There wouldn't be any international jurors like a like a Melfest, a lot of the other yep. national finals. That this is an Australian there. thing, and let's let's own it and let's yeah. send what we want to send. Because if yeah. you're going to get the public behind it, you don't want some random person from Europe. When you're talking to the general public, they won't know yep. who that is. They want to, We wanted to have this as an Australian choice, as you say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So really good. I, I took a lot out of that. Obviously, there's some. Uh, Different uh, details coming out. It sounds like in the next couple of weeks to a Mm. month, I think a lot of things will get cleared up and hopefully we might be able to touch base with him and uh, after a bit more clarification. Yeah, no worries. Well, thanks very much for listening. Can you hear the cat? I can definitely (laughs) hear that cat. She wants to be a part of it. Yep, she's having a good old sing over there. But anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Um, You can always get us at Aussie Vision Net if you've got any insights that you've taken away from it that we might have missed. Mm, Definitely. Definitely hit us up uh, on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Are we on Instagram? Yeah, but we don't really use it that much oh, okay. these days. <laughs> Next year we'll do it more. <laughs> All right. All thanks right. for thanks for joining us, guys. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye.